Well guys, welcome to a history of Whiteburg City. Now this video is going to feature the real life history of Whiteburg City, the development from the early days of beta Minecraft up to where it is currently now in 2021. So let's get started with the earliest world I have, World Alpha 1, version 1 of 7 of Whiteburg City. So let's see what this history has in store. So what you're looking at here is version one, phase one. This is the original Whiteburg City, started in April 2011 and built on until about August 2012. There isn't much to see here from the map, but the main theme for this place was anything goes slash uh, Minecraft Brutalist. Yeah, strange, strange collection there. The whole town is based around one big building in the center, the palace, along with the train station, a church, and a harbour down here. So I think it's time to jump into game and I'm gonna show you around my first ever world. The city of Whiteburg. Well, at this point, I'm not entirely sure it was called Whiteburg, but I know when it did finally get the name and that's when the snow arrived. This world is known as World Alpha 1. And you may be wondering, Alpha, is that? It's meant to say Alpha but I'm terrible at spelling, so I spelt it like that and, and never changed it, so um, yeah. Now this world was my first ever, ever world in Minecraft, and I obviously started out as a survival world. From a small shack, it went up into a large city. Now you may be wondering, where is this starter home? Um, I can't show you it yet, We'll see that in the next phase of this version of Whiteburg. Remember, there's seven versions we're going through. This is phase one of version one. There's a lot to see. So let's get started down here in White Harbor. And let's have a look up at this here. This was a lighthouse that I built. I don't think it goes anywhere here. Out of the first selection of bricks I ever found. Um, and there's obviously a lot of light up here. Now, this is days or years before glowstone was a thing, um, I think. Or I might have been just done this. The version of beta this was, was 1.4. There wasn't even stone bricks to use to texture any of this. The entire city is built from smooth stone. So yeah, let's go take a look inside this amazing structure. So if we wander on across here towards what is the royal palace there, a monument to the lost diamonds we'll get to in a bit, and also the main town down here. So like I mentioned, I can't show you the original shack just yet, but on screen now is an image I took with my phone of the original starter house. And yeah, it's fairly basic. In this version of Minecraft, we only had these pieces of glass and the oak you can see here. Oh, I mean, I even put some little flowers around and made some shops. This is West Key, West Key. West Key is a large shopping center in Southampton. I use that name here to describe a shop that doesn't even have a floor. Ah, I remember these days. These days were fun. I really enjoy playing this version of Survival Minecraft. So speaking of this original starter house, this is what's all that's left of it, a bridge. Now, if I dig down around about uh, here, we're gonna get into, yes, here we go, into the foundations of this house. Uh, uh. But like I said, we'll come back here in the later version and see it properly. <laughs> Let's get out. Let's take a look at the city itself. So here it is. It's not very big. It's not very impressive, but the brutalist architecture was my favorite style at this time in history. Uh, I was about 15 when I started this. So yeah, for some reason that was like me exploring different styles of architecture. So down through there is the rest of the city. Up in here is the Royal Palace. We're gonna go look at that first, but remember no zombies, no pigs, no chickens in here. Now, is this gonna work? Sometimes redstone likes to take a little while to kick back in. So we see this massive obelisk here and this is the white monument here lies all the hopes of the diamonds. So one day I died in some lava and I came back up and, and built this as a monument to it. I don't really know what I was doing back then, but these were the early days of Minecraft. You could do what you want. There was no set styles. There was no nothing. And this was my house complete with stone sofa. Let's put a little music disc on. There we go. That's cat there. Oh, I haven't been in this place for years. So around this other side was the other part of the living room. We had the furnace room over here, and I think my bedroom was through this way. So in here was my bedroom with the wall and the bed raised above the ground so the creepers and the zombies couldn't get to me. God, that's a lot of gold in there. TNT? Yeah, I think I cheated those bits in as you do. But yeah, guys, so there's a few notable buildings I wish to show you around here. Is that 50 blocks of diamonds? 
Um, <laughs> so down this way was towards my mine. Um, if we go on down here, we might find my incinerators. Here we go, my, my, my proper incinerators. But if we follow this path all the way around, we will pop up here into the mining company building. So this is in the heart of Whiteburg now. And what was this place called? This was the White Ink headquarters. So White Ink, White Co, Whiteburg City Builds, they're all one and the same company. They are a company that I built and designed to be within inside the game. So this was founded apparently on the 3rd of the 6th, 2011. So that's some more dating for us here. Uh, what's this? Center of the world, St. Jimmy statue. Okay. So currently, if you are watching like my Whiteburg series or anything to do with my channel, you'll know that Whiteburg version 7, as that one's known, is the city of domes. Make your mind up what this city is going to be called. Um, yeah. So another notable building I wish to show you is this one here. This is the second house I ever built. Uh, originally it was made out of oak. Um, and this was actually another interesting thing I saw when I came back on the world. You see the sign here? Building work starts 5.30 on the 8th of the 8th, 2011. Do you know what I was going to build down there? I was going to build the Reichstag. Never happened. Never was going to happen, I don't think. But for some reason, I put diamond blocks in the road. I, I, I don't know what was going on in my head at this time. So I have another building I wish to show you, actually, before we move on from this version of the world. And that is a building that will pop up a lot. Whiteburg Central Station. Or as we can see here an absolutely massive monolithic building made out of stone and built once again in the brutalist style of architecture. It's not even brutalism, is it? It's just strange. Lots of windows, lots of glass. Well, guys, that has been a little tour around here. I have a few notable places to show you outside of the main city, so let's jump over to one of those now. So moving slightly away from the city, you can see it's just over there, along the train tracks that come out of Whiteburg Central, we have the small little hamlet. I say hamlet. The small building of the town of Rayton, established in 2012, with another one of these gold obelisks in. Uh, this building was going to be something. I think this is going to be the town hall originally. Again, bricks were kind of a bit more, they were very rare to get, and I think swamps had just been introduced in this version of the game. This was 1.8, I think, the proper, the update that changed the world as it was known but yes yeah, so this was just another little thing that was going to happen it never did as we all find with all of our minecraft builds right one more place to show you before we move on to phase number two So even though I played this only as a solo survival world, I still made sure I would actually hide my uh, my finds, my good stuff. Although we did find 50 blocks of diamonds in that chest just then. Welcome to Fort South Park. Yes, what a cringeworthy name. Uh, I was obviously watching South Park as a 15 year old child at this point. Child? Teenager? Whatever you want to call them. Yep, this is South Park established in the 15th of the 6th, 2011. Now, what this place is, is a little harbour that I would come into. There's a boat down there. And dock up in here. Uh, and then come on inside and we'll go on down into my private sleeping quarters where I keep a underground sort of chest full of stuff. Is this another way in or is this going to be, oh, this is going to be another building. But yeah, so this is all underwater and there's a little bed here. I really liked this and for the time period, this was something I've never seen before and wanted to do myself. So in these chests here was where I kept lo loads of random supplies of stuff, although it's all empty. Uh, and then down here, if I remember correctly, yeah, this was like a vault and I just store blocks and stuff down here this is long before beacons were a thing so you know i was i was doing my my stacking like this anyway but yeah so guys that has uh that has been version one phase one now there's several more phases to show you in this world so let's jump on over to phase number two of world alpha one So version one, phase two, saw the introduction of more places around Whiteburg. Over here to the left, we have Ocelot City, named so because, well, you're about to find out why in the next section. But there is a large skyscraper here, along with a connected railway station that travels back through here under the main palace and over to Whiteburg Central. Note, there's also a brand new airport built, the Imperial Palace in the centre there, the harbour's been upgraded, and there's a large road that runs through the centre. This world also saw the introduction of my first ever time using World Painter and developing this mountain here, along with also these strange rivers. And World Edit was also on the cards so i think it's time to jump into the game and see what 2013 me was building like 
Well guys, do you remember when you first discovered one World Edit and two World Painter? Well, this was the world that I started doing all of that stuff on. Welcome to around about 2013 and welcome to the frame rate from hell. Behind me are about a thousand ocelots. My mistake, I didn't mean to cause to make this place jungle. I didn't expect it to end up like this. This world is unplayable and it's interesting because this is the only save I have of this version. So I kind of wanted to bring you guys into it just to experience pain of ocelots. So behind me was going to be a rendition of the Chrysler building. The Chrysler building that was obviously cut off at the knees, the legs, and all that was left is the head. Now this is a point in time, like I said, where I discovered World Edit and I was using it um, to do things like this mountain over here. No, this was made out of World Painter and it's covered in ocelots again. So yes, please excuse the frame rate on this, even without shaders on. It is an absolute nightmare. Let's, let's move on closer back over towards the city. So as I mentioned, there was was my first ever house so let's go take a look at that and here it is the first ever house I ever built in game it's very basic um, there's just a small little upstairs and then down here we have the furnace and as I said before the bedroom in there with oh anyway that doesn't matter now let's get back out of here So another notable mention is the new town hall. Now this is using some of the newer blocks that came about in this version of the game, mainly the terracotta, but as we, as we called them at the time, adobe blocks. Uh, and this building never got finished. It's just kind of this. Load of lapis down there. Um, and yeah, and the rest of it kind of just carries on as it was. This is the new monument, another one of these. Yeah, the name of this place definitely isn't the City of Domes, is it? There's no name on this one. I will have to remember what that was called. Uh, and then we have the final mention for this place, the Imperial Palace opposite the Royal Palace. I think I built inside here like, um, yeah, a staircase. You can't even use this staircase. <laughs> It's not even it's not even stairs. Oh my god. Okay, right. Well, that's probably most of what there is in in this version. Let's go take a look at uh, phase number 3. The year is 2014 and it's coming up to the end of this version. So version 1 phase 3 is the largest this town ever got to. So we had Ocelot City over here in the left last time, and that has been added to with all of these roads and railways, all leading to nowhere and being overly large and ben bendy, very, very bendy. The notable building you can see here is based on the Brandenburg Gate. We'll see that in game in a second, and also some skyscrapers and towers all around. So let's jump into game and see how this world finally ended up. My god, look at that place. That was the Chrysler building, made out of stone bricks. All stone bricks. Hey, look, we, we all go through the same phase of building, don't we? So, main notable differences here are the massive increase of tower blocks made out of just bricks and and plain walls. Why does this have no windows on it? I do not know. This this building here, let's talk about this for a second, is the original White Co Industries HQ. Now we're gonna see more about White Co Industries as we go along this series. Um, this was the original tower and you will actually see this in a later version, rebuilt and doubled up. We'll get to that in a bit. So a few other notable sort of mentions here is that was the first house, of, second house of Whiteburg. It's now been returned back to Oak. We saw it in a stone earlier on, a uh, very interesting building indeed apparently it was built in 4000 bc i don't know what i was on when i was building this and this building here is another lovely brutalist structure wow this is this is disgustingly scary oh i love it and the final thing to mention on this world is the gate of whiteberg now i did finish this i couldn't find the world where this finished in um but these columns are chunky to say the least chunky i would say in a different voice i don't know what they were i don't know why i designed them like this and this was based on the brandenburg gate now i can't walk any further forward. I forgot to take out the thing that was on the mountain in this one, so yeah. Now if you're interested in seeing what this final structure looked like, um, you can you can watch a video that's on my old channel, Sassy Treacle, that has me doing an entire time lapse of this area. And then going at the end of that video, well that's it for Let's Build Whiteberg. I'm going to start a new world and call it Whiteberg again and that kind of is just how things happen. I have actually left down below in the description that a playlist that contains all of the videos on that old channel to do with Whiteberg and building. It's really interesting. Uh, go watch it if you have a spare few hours and you want to see some cringeworthy videos. They aren't all that bad. So that wraps it up for World Alpha 1, 2 and 3. Now I think it's time to move on to version number 2, the city of Whiteberg. 
The year is 2014, around about August, and I have started a brand new city. This is the city of Whiteburg, or known to us as version 2, phase 1. So this is a project that I actually gave proper thought to as to how it might turn into a city. You can see the layout here is much better than the last one. Still not quite very realistic, uh, and there are more buildings around the place at a larger scale. So I think we should jump into the world so I can show off what we did with this one. Welcome to the city of Whiteburg. Now, we're going to walk around here and I'm going to explain to you a few things about the way I used to build. A lot of you probably are in that stage still of building where you like to copy things in order to understand how techniques and designs and all of that work. This was my era of copying things. So let me introduce you to a few buildings that aren't mine. That one there, that one there, that one there, the one at the back is mine not my proudest piece of work and, and luckily this train station here is mine although the design for it is actually based on open ttd uh the the uh transport tycoon game <laughs> which um yeah the scale of this is ridiculously small look at it so i'm still using minecart tracks in order to actually use a proper train system through here and this train station is tiny now that building on the end there was one of mine but the design for it was based on this so you can see how styles and designs get moved around when you copy, but when you actually then go ahead and try and make your own thing, can you come up with something completely different? So let me explain to you where these buildings came from. Walk. All of them, all of them came from World of Coralis. I'm, I'm deeply sorry that I never credited anyone for these. Um, you know how it is when you're 18 years old, don't you? Probably not. So yeah, I built these, made videos on them. Those videos aren't private anymore. I think I unprived them, so you can still see them. They're in the playlist below that I mentioned previously. So this is based on the bottom half of the Singer building. Um, the tower isn't there, and then this one next door was pretty much a verbatim copy um, that I rebuilt block for block. I mean, I'm quite proud that I rebuilt them block to block. No, I'm not. Don't just. Don't. Um, but it did teach me valuable lessons about scale, size, and techniques. I was so lazy copying this one. I didn't even bother to fill in the windows or even the floor. I just wanted this and I just left it as that. You know, it's really depressing seeing that. <laughs> I really wish I'd finished it. Um, so a few other notable mentions in this world is this big building behind me, which isn't complete. It'd be complete in the next phase that we go to. Uh, this is the White Coat Industries HQ. Now, you know I mentioned White Coat Industries before. Um, yeah, we'll see that later on again. Now, now, I love doing infrastructure and this is one of the first times I gave a proper go at building some roads. You're probably wondering why is everything made out of bedrock? We used to use a texture pack called Flows HD uh, which made everything look a bit more modern and a bit more um, different so all of this would have looked like tarmac rather than that. So yeah, this was an interesting one and I enjoyed building in it. Uh, it definitely started teaching me different ideas and different techniques. Plus, I was having some builders on and some friends on to build because I took this onto a server, um, mainly because at this point in time I was living away from home at university for the first time so it was really nice just to be able to do something of an evening where you carried on playing with your friends from back home yeah this building is look at it it's just got floor after floor copied and pasted in loads of office blocks and, and not even not even glass panes my god what a depressing place to work in uh what's quite funny is while i was building this i was watching the office on um on netflix as well the us office um so that kind of gave me some inspiration for this i think through here yeah there's like a boardroom on every single floor not gonna lie that's quite a nice view. That That is quite nice. Well, guys, I think that's all there is to see in this version. Let's move on to phase number two of version two. It's now about November 2014, after a few months of building on this server and carrying on the theme of Victorian slash anything goes slash really not Victorian and a bit of modern over here in what is known as Westberg. This is version 2.2, the final phase of this project before we moved on to an even better map. So let's jump into the game. I'm gonna show you a few interesting buildings around this one. So what you're seeing behind me is the main hotel for the entire town. And this is built on top of that old station we used to have. Note the uh, Singer building from the previous one. And then you have other 
strange buildings. So a notable mention throughout all of this is at this point in time, I had opened the server up now to allow people to come on and build, uh, but only via applications on Google+. Plus. Uh, who remembers Google+, Plus? that was a, an interesting time. But you can see here, there are all sorts of different build styles going on. Like, I'm not entirely sure what that is or whether it was ever finished, but it's a strange one. And this bank of just quartz, yeah, lovely, lovely stuff indeed. And I'm not entirely sure what this is. But as I mentioned in, in, um, in version one, phase three, that tower reared its ugly head and it grew another one. So this is a double breasted tower building thing. There was limited supply of blocks at this point in time still. I mean, this is 1.8, I believe, uh, probably 1.84 or 1.83 actually, as I've got written down. Uh, that tower there is built by one of the other builders on here. Again, quite an interesting design, never seen anything since. And there's a postmodern building in the background there. Uh, this building here actually holds quite a lot of information in it, like in the sense of when I designed this, I based it on that one over there, the one that I, the one that I copied from Wok and then tried to change it up and make it my own. Now, this is like a learning skill that I wish you guys to like take away. Obviously, when you copy something, you know, you need to credit the original builder. But when you then use the styles, designs and techniques within that copy to then build your own building, you know, it's not always the worst thing in the world. That's kind of how we learn. Uh, there's a few other like little bits and bobs dotted around here that I kind of wish to make note about. We'll go over that way in a second. But this building in particular behind it is built out of smooth sandstone. Now, you're probably wondering, you might not even know, but in this version of Minecraft, smooth sandstone didn't exist. It didn't come into the game until 1.14, I don't think, in 2014. This was actually made using world edit to generate uh, half slabs or slabs, as these were down here, smooth stone slabs that had a texture on them as smooth sandstone. You could only get it through world edit, if I remember correctly. And I started building this this uh, Art Deco skyscraper, and I kind of wish I finished it. I thought it looked really good. Um, it's a shame it never never came to fruition. Maybe maybe I will rebuild it one day, guys. We might have another go at that. Now over here, I think there is a notable mention we must show you. So I'm not American. I mean, that's hopefully fairly obvious, but this is Walmart, uh, built by one of the builders on the server at the time. I kind of like it. Um, it's got that realism about it. Now, I don't know if this was copied from somewhere else. It probably was, um, as I remember some realistic servers at the time doing these types of buildings quite regularly. There's actually something else I wanted to show you back over there in the center. I found the old server spawn. Let's go take a look at that board. So I'm down here on the ice rink just in front of what was White Coat Industries HQ. But inside here, in this beautifully decked out place, look at those staircases. Oh my, why didn't I just bend? Okay, what is this? There is there is so much I haven't really explored on here. I didn't know this existed. Oh my, hang on. Ha I never knew this was here. I have never seen this before in my entire life. Crikey. Okay, this this is Whiteberg Central Station under here, guys. Look at the look at the gradient on them. Oh my. Anyway, so that's that's a shock. I didn't know this was actually um a thing that goes down even deeper. Well, this is the fun of keeping old worlds. You end up exploring things you haven't even seen. What is this? The Cleaner 2048. Ah, Nexus Labs. That's another industry you'll see a bit more of in the next phase. Uh, anyway, let's go back upstairs. So over here, next to the sort of main desk, is uh, the main server board. So when you joined the server, this is where you spawned in. Welcome to Whiteberg City, population two. I mean, it has has it really improved since then? Probably population three now. Anyway, please use Flow's HD texture pack. Yes, that's what we were using at the time because Wok was all the range. Uh, building styles are Victorian. Vic Victorian. Okay, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah. Uh, neoclassical and Art Deco. Uh, if you wish to join Modern, go join Westberg. So that's a notable mention. We'll go see Westberg in a moment. Uh, and these are the builders at the time. So your admins are Ginger Snake X, myself, uh, CMM Soto, and Dragon Kakar. And then we had Jasper Mo, who um, I think I fell out with at one point, and he was the modern builder. Um, yeah, we'll get onto that story in a bit. Um, but I just wanted to show you something upstairs here. Like when I when I opened this world back up, I I saw this this helicopter up here, and I was like, I wonder what that's doing. It turns out it's up in uh, the HQ's head office. So atop of this skyscraper was my office. So you kind of had these lifts, these elevators, really poorly built. What is, oh, okay, it's just straight down. Um, this is kind of the style of Minecraft at the time. This is what building was like. Super realism didn't really exist unless you had like a proper realistic server. And these are kind of the interiors. I mean, this is level basic still. This is this is like strangely basic, but we didn't have that much to go with. This is 2014, eight years ago. Just look at that skyline out there. Now there was a sword in here called Blade of Treacle, but when I came up here and tried to get it out earlier on, I, I broke it. So just take my word for that. Uh, anyway, so let's go take a look at this notable mention of Westberg. 
So just down the main road from Whiteburg City is the uh, shining city of Westburg. This was the modern sister city to the project. Modern being used in a very loose term. This was possibly, I don't know. This is very basic, even for 2014. Uh, this was just being built by one person at the time. And a few of these buildings did carry on into version three, which we'll see later on. But as you can see, all of the floors are just copied and pasted. And there is something over here that is absolutely killing my PC. Oh my God. Um, yeah, that was the other issue with this sort of thing, like animals and spawning. And these worlds were a mess. So after, you know, I think we spent six months on this world, it finally went to the point of saying, enough's enough. Let's start again. Let's build a new city and let's build it properly this time. Let's go see version three. This image you're looking at now is from around about March 2015, and it shows the sort of close to end stages of version three. Now, this was a city where the theme was anything goes as long as it's kind of American and Art Deco slash Victorian again. There's a lot of that slash Victorian because we didn't really know what it was. Over here to the right, we had a place known as Westburg, even though it's in the east. It's a hangover from Westburg in version 2.2. So let's jump into the game. I'm going to show you some buildings that I are still love to this day. Welcome to the other Whiteberg City, Whiteberg City version 3. They're all called Whiteberg City. This one was actually one of my favourites. Now, this spawned a lot of builders. Uh, we had probably upwards of 20 people on at the time. This is this is the City Hall. Now, it's an interesting building. I built this out of my own mind. Um, I don't really know what I was thinking. Look at this. This is, um, this is not the very nice bit of classical architecture that I'm known for these days. Uh, what's interesting, actually, is this flag here is the first iteration of the Whiteberg flag. You know, the one I'm actually wearing on my back, on my front, you can see the textures are slightly different colour, but that's because um, this in this texture pack, that was the correct colours as we're wearing them there. Uh, before we go and look inside, actually, I just want to name a few buildings around here. This is the White Co Industries building. So it's based on the Rockefeller Centre and it is made out of smooth sandstone, almost, uh, in New York. And as I mentioned earlier on in this series, I loved brutalism. I then moved on to loving Art Deco before we move on then, obviously, to Victorian. And this has to be one of my favorite buildings I ever built. I then destroyed it at some point. I don't remember why. Uh, we'll go look inside there in a bit. Um, and then we've got some other ones around there. That one over there is the White Co. Well, the post office building as it was there. It will eventually become the White Co. Industries building in later versions. Uh, you'll also notice the Planet World. Which is very nice. Built by um, a friend of mine. And a few other ones around here that we'll get to in a bit. Now, these lion statues as well come with us throughout the versions. And it's, it's interesting to see how much gets recycled and reused. Now, there's a few other buildings. Endstone. Questionable. The version at the time here was around about 1.15, uh, sorry, 1.85. So we're, we're getting further and further in towards, you know, the later full, full release. So coming inside here, we are greeted with a wall of heads. Now, this is the wall of builders. It's not completely completed. I think we left a few off because people come, people go. As you can see, that's me with my old skin. Uh, interesting one. And these are a few other people who, um, you know, come and go. There's Jamie. Now, this person here, Bob the Builder, as we know him, you can see why, is uh, Tima, who is actually building with us again today. Now, it's great to have you back, Tima, because you've been here for years. I mean, this is 2015. We're now in 2021, almost 2022. That's a long time ago, seven years ago. Anyway, so the mods at works. So this is what you do when you moderate a Minecraft server with pretty much just all mods, but no one else. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. And there's me at the end there with White Co Industries, Nexus Labs, and uh, Nordic Liners. That was your company, Bob. Interesting. So this is a version of Whiteberg where the law starts building and we get ideas of what things are going on. I, I, I really enjoyed this one and this was a great um, a great server full of great people. What's this? Sassy Treacle Do Not Disturb. Vice Mayor, Jamie, and Mr. White the Mayor. So this is my office in here. It's a bit more, a bit smaller than the last one. What on earth is this chair? Uh, the gold block to the city has been taken. Uh, what's all this in here? Margaret and Deborah. Okay. What is Military grade nerve gas. <laughs> Yeah, the RP on here was a little bit hard sometimes, I think. Um, yeah, so in here, this was Sassy Treacle at work, um, along with the Yost cast. Now all the heads are gone, and they were being filmed. The is this like the original hot tub stream? I, I don't know. This again, like I said, was about seven years ago. Uh, there's a few more floors over here. I think over here is the courtroom that was inside here. Yeah, very interesting stuff indeed. And um, I think there was another floor in here, but I can't remember what was up here. Oh, a few more offices. We got uh, Nexus Labs, 
and some other ones over here. I think that's the gold block to the city that someone nicked. Right, well, let's go outside and have a little look around here then. So this city, as I mentioned, is actually starting to form a bit more of a personality about it. So we have buildings that kind of rem represent better styles. So I built that one there on the side. That's the second Bank of Whiteburg, I believe. I think this one actually has interiors as well. You can see this building here never got finished, even though we copied it across. Yeah, this is the, the second Bank of Whiteburg, and there's currently a robbery going on as apparently all of the tellers are, are Mario. Uh, I think if we go through here, I think this was actually like a door or these blocks have now been changed or done something. There's a vault back here with just dirt in it. Someone's already stolen it all. Yeah, I think all of these blocks have disappeared and that's another vault in there. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm reminiscing as much as you guys are learning as we're walking around here. Let's go back outside. So as we come past the main square and see again Whiteberg Industries, or White Co Industries, sorry, I really like this square and um, there was a nice Christmas market in here one year as well. That centre spot over there never got taken up by anything. I did have that building there um, originally, which I, I did like that one. I can't remember when I built that one, many years ago. Uh, and now we come on to a few more that I'm quite proud of from bygone era. This was based on the world building from New York. The world building is quite small. Uh, I then scaled it up and made it into this uh, monstrosity of a neoclassical skyscraper. Now, I do wish to rebuild this one day on our server now uh, in a better way. Oh, there's a nice little set of pool tables up here on the roof. Uh, and this was the dome around here. It's a bit more of a pointed dome than anything. Uh, to be honest, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, and I was really happy with it when I built it back seven or eight years ago now. I remember actually staying up all night building this um, with a couple of friends, actually. There's nothing inside. Uh, oh, no. I tell a lie. There is something inside. There is an entire lobby. Ah, here we go. It's called the Winchester. It's built by myself. The Newburgh Postal Headquarters. So, that reminds me. Newburgh. So, Whiteburg and Newburgh formed one place, I believe, or Whiteburg and Westburg formed... Yeah, it's very strange. So, we had, um, we had these balls boards inside many of the buildings that builders could come around and post their comments on if they um if they liked something or we had the whole idea of leaving cakes out the front as well i think we nicked that idea from walk but yeah so these are some comments great uh, it's it's amazing timo you're still around it's perfect anyway so i want to show you another notable mention So this is Whiteburg Central Station. I told you it would appear in nearly every single one, didn't I? Based on London Victoria at this point, um, this was my first endeavour at building anything Victorian, so to speak. It's an interesting take on it. I, I would love to do it again these days and see what different techniques and styles I would go ahead and be able to do. To be honest, it's not the worst, and it did get a facelift every couple of years as we kept moving it across the servers. That is correct. This one is featured in possibly the next two or three versions of the world. Now, if we go on inside, I did build the interior for it, or at least some of it. Now, you see up there, that is the White Coat Industries logo, and... That's, that's bringing back memories already. So the ceiling in here I thought was really nice. It's a glass ceiling, but then you've got a second layer of glass, uh, which is a different color, it lets through a different color of light. And the whole thing is big and open. Now I did take inspiration for this train shed from a video that Corrales did actually, when he went around and looked at the station from Wok again. And I, I think I changed it up fairly desperately. I don't really know. There's just one support beam in there. That's it. Uh, but like I said, this station is then taken and repurposed and reused so many times. Uh, that's quite a, a wiggly line down into some tunnels over there. So I've got two more notable mentions I want to show you before we move on to the next version. So we're over on what I like to class as the outskirts of town. See this bridge. Um, I like, I love this bridge. And again, as always, I recycle things. So you'll see this again at some point. Uh, I can't remember where I got the design for for this. There's a glow squid down there. <laughs> okay, that clearly wasn't a thing back in 1.18. Um, anyway, this building here was my first foray into Second Empire designs. It's not very good, and I'm still using the whole idea of you can't have corners as corners. You need to have some sort of detailing in it. I mean, it works. It's not too heavily detailed or over-detailed. And you can also see at this point, the scale I'm using here is exactly the same scale that we use nowadays in Whiteburg City and around. So nothing really has changed now for the last seven years. Anyway, this is what I mentioned earlier on about cakes being left outside here. Um, I'm just 
it's just lovely. Now I did do a full interior of this one and also I did make a video on how to build it but you can see in here it's uh, I don't know actually it's not it's not bad. So I don't tend to build interiors too much these days to a lot of people's uh, disgust um, but I used to. I did used to do it quite a bit. This was the den. I loved this room actually. There's like a secret um, what was in here? Oh, the boiler and stuff and you got the light coming in through there. No I, I did really like this house. Um, if we go upstairs here we'll see the bedrooms as well. Uh, it's just really nice to reminisce on this sort of stuff. It's a spiral stair case up there into the uh, into the roof we've got some big old bedrooms with some big double poster beds and uh some nice detailing on the ceiling there and it'll oh, do you know what that actually really scared me then because i thought someone else was in the world but i forgot it's not on peaceful here uh, and this this is a version of the of the house it hasn't actually been finished so we're in the wrong world for that what was up here yeah unfortunately none of this has been done right let's go to the other notable mention So we're back in downtown Whiteburg City, outside Planet World. I really loved that building. Thank you, Finn, for building that. We've got the big old wide roads around here, and you get a good feeling about the place. So this is the building I was mentioning, White Co Industries HQ. Now, this building disappears in the next phase, so I thought I might as well bring you in here and show you what's going on. Lovely big open lobby down here, nice art deco use. Stained glass became a thing, and that's why we kept using it everywhere. So welcome to White Co Industries, established 1850, apparently. We have Simon and Lewis from the Yorks cast in here holding back the fort. Now the place I want to show you is actually upstairs so let's fly up there. Behind this door here is a not so empty room. This is my office. Now some may call me a narcissist, some may call me an emperor or a god. I, I, no one calls me that. This place was the the headquarters of White Co Industry and this was my very heavy heavy Victorian design. I had never write cur curtains which were held up by big bits of gold and a desk that was, I need to get like a, there's, there's like no light in here. Let me just get some light out. And a desk that was three meters high and a chair that was just as big. Like this was a throne. Just look at this place. I never, never had anything like this afterwards. This was, this was it. This was the biggest office I've ever had. I lie, I've built a bigger one. So anyway, that's the notable mentions for this world. Let's have a look at phase two of version three. Version 3.2 takes place in around about May 2015, so nothing much has changed from the previous version apart from the addition of a few suburbs, let's put those in brackets. Down here in the corner we have an area of the city known as Victoria Park, which is a beautiful park complete with townhouses around it. And up here in the top right we have a lovely suburban neighbourhood that was added sort of towards the end of this version. Now the middle section is still fairly empty with lots of grids laid out for future projects which clearly never materialized. Let's jump into game, I've got a few thoughts on this city. Well then guys, let's go take a look around here and see some more notable mentions. The building behind me there is the Nordic Liners Main HQ, and this building was built by Tima. Like it, it's a good looking building. Now, the rest of this place, there is a few things I wanted to show you that were slightly different here. You may notice that the building that used to stand here, the, the uh, Rockefeller Center, has now been replaced with a very stumpy version of 44 Wall Street. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I decided to build this one instead. Uh, never finished it, just left it to rot here. Uh, maybe one day we'll have a go at building in this one again when the I actually upgrade to 1.18 where it will have the massive height changes. So you're seeing as well a few other notable differences. The uh, hotel which was there and was also in the old world has now been put here in front of the park and where it should be. It's a very nice spot here next to the rest of the big old skyscrapers. Behind me there was another thing I wanted to show you and that was a construction site next to a flyover. Th at this point in time things are really starting to get better and better with this world. Uh, so much so that we then decide to move on to another version because that's how progress works. But yeah I liked this it wasn't ever going to go anywhere and I think if I look hard enough there actually is uh I thought there was a Kralis statue somewhere that would be amazing if there actually was still aha uh -huh, there we go I did find it there is Kralis standing up here looking like he's just about to fall off this building and there's a much better crane design in the background based on not like I had before this place is cool I love a construction site might have to build some more actually in the new version of the map now there's a few notable mentions I want to show you before we move on to the next version let's go see Victoria Park So we're here in Victoria Park, my favourite part of this server, of this world. This was a beautiful place to be, full of life, full of happiness, 
full of a crowd. Ah, uh, if you can name, uh, let's go stand actually on the stage. If you can name all of the people in this crowd, you're as old as I am. Uh, it's mainly just the Yorks cast. There's, there's Herobrine there, and also Kralis again. Uh, you can see how much of an influence he was on me and the rest of the server. So if you are watching this, Kralis, thank you, thank you so much. But yeah, there's Sips, there's Duncan, there's Jamie and Finn. Ah, uh, and look at it and it's me my old skin anyway let's stop reminiscing about that because you guys have never seen this before this is a collection of townhouses i built based on some in new york now you've got that sort of american vibe about them they're nice they're nice buildings uh, i think this one actually has a full interior so let's go take a look inside at more 2015 interiors oh that's a big old television screen uh what's around the back here these are quite big houses actually little kitchen Oh, bathroom and then we've got the kitchen and dining room at the back here this building stretches on quite far um but you can see there wasn't that much we could do with our designs back here again really quite hard to get a lot of stuff in these small spaces so what this city did is it fueled my need and my desire to build something a bit more based on real life so before i was going through the idea that you had to you know design your whole things yourself but what i was learning more and more is it's better to take inspiration and then work with that to be able to create your own designs so during the next phase uh we actually went ahead with that and made a lot of progress in using real life inspiration to build stuff so let me take you guys to version 4 and you'll see what i mean Version 4.1 is a city that was actually planned out to be half American, half British. So up here in the top sections, we had the New York-esque section known as Newburgh. And down on this other section here, we had we had the more London-themed area with places such as Victoria Station, uh, Nelson's Column, and even a section of Harrods down here. Now, this is a theme that carries on across a, quite a few versions of Whiteburg after this. So let's jump into game, and I'm going to show you a few notable buildings. Now this version of the world is Whiteburg but with a twist. So in this version we are discovering how to combine New York, I say New York very loosely, with London and this is the first time I'm of doing this type of thing and it's a style that carries on across quite a few versions. Now what you're going to see here is the first iteration of the Whiteburg City Hall complete with massive banners of the Whiteburg crest. Now a lot of people ask which way do the Whiteburg lines go? Originally they went down like this, then we start making flags where they went the other way as well. So technically they both go both ways. Um, now a little thing I forgot is this here, this is a, a set of gallows. I didn't build these. Um, this is when we had a lot of people on our server now and it was really nice to see. Uh, there's actually a time lapse video on this being built in that playlist below so check that out if you want to see a bit more about it. I think it's based on the Baltimore um, State Capitol building. Um, really liked building it, had a good bit of fun doing so. But you can see this city is much more developed, much more expanded than the last one. And it's kind of held around a nucleus. So the idea is anything that side was America, anything this side was London. And that kind of went ahead. Oh, look at that view down there for quite a while. Now I'm just going to take a step inside here because I think behind the lag there is actually a wall of builders and stuff. Why? computers ah oh, look at this place so that we have gone through quite a few ways of designing this and you'll see in a later version a completely different way now here it is the proper wall and I was gonna see what this says first oh yeah how to apply so people could join this but then you would have to email this address here which I think is still open wbc at gmail.com okay and then those applications would get processed and they would come through and oh my god what a scary wall and we would take those applications and, and see what happens um I mean, obviously, this isn't my face anymore. I have a less, uh, a less grin. But wow. Uh, anyway, so these are the builders. This is the wall of great builders. I obviously didn't make this myself. <laughs> Saint Laurent. So that was Bob's town that we made. Uh, actually, that was before this. Um, he carried it on. It was a separate town to the last world we were on. Uh, and this was a list of other builders we had at the time as well. Um, some great people there. And I kind of miss a lot of them. Is that Peter Griffin? Okay. Anyway, let's go outside and have a look around and see what we can see. Ah, yeah. This was another thing, actually. This was the list of all of the spawns and warps we had on here. So we had several cities. Whiteburg at the time wasn't known as Whiteburg. 
It was known as Newburgh. Now, Newburgh was an area like you can see out there. And Newburgh is meant to represent New York plus London. Now, now I remember, I, I kind of forgot about all of this. Um, we did see it before, actually, in the other world, where it said Newburgh uh, Postal Service. So anyway, all of these were just ways of like setting out what you can build and where. A lot of creative servers tend to do this. Um, we don't really do it much anymore on our server because everything's kind of planned by each builder independently. This was the idea for doing an entire city together. Anything up here? Oh, some offices in the corner. Lovely. Right, let's go take a look outside. So you'll notice a lot of very tall skyscrapers here, and these were copied across from the old world. This was that one based on the world building. That was another one I designed independently, which I didn't really like. And this was a, just a giant townhouse in the middle. Very strange one. Uh, we will travel down that way later. It's very laggy down that way. Um, but I wanted to show you this square, first of all, and that god-awful statue of me over here. Um, you may be wondering why we're so fast again. It's locked to this speed. Welcome to your nightmares, and welcome to my sunburn. So obviously in Flows HD, this looked a bit more more like flesh um, and this is a statue of me now this is a statue of me riding a donkey apparently uh, and this carried on throughout many many versions of the world um, but I loved it so this was the main sort of hub the main center of the city you had the old bus rank there more realistic looking roads so clearly all of this was still set in the modern era even bus lanes and that now I don't know if you're familiar with Trafalgar Square but this is meant to be Nelson's column um, or at least my rendition of it and then someone put an egg on top don't know why uh, and yeah, the, the lions, which probably should have been built diagonally, kind of went, net. Nah, let's build them like that. These are the same lions that we saw out front of the old city hall as well on the previous version. So as you see, we like to recycle things a lot. Um, what's down here? I think this is, yep, yeah, it's a car park under there. I forgot about that. That was pretty cool. So again, I was at university during all of this. So this was all built in my free time alongside doing studies and also just doing normal things. So as mentioned, Whiteburg Central Station came over to this world as well, but got a makeover and looked a bit better, I would say, apart from the glowstone down the side there. These roofs are much more mansard and the chimneys much more like they are on the real life building. Still, a lot of details are a bit strange about it. Uh, if we go inside, I think some things got changed in here. <laughs> There's some cakes and signs going around. Lovely stuff. Pause that to read those lovely messages there. But yeah, let's go inside. It's Whiteburg Central Station. So I think it's pretty much the same as it was before in the next version it does change up a bit but we now got steam trains coming in and doing all of that and the area out the back was still quite steep but a much more thought out way now you may be familiar with how we do our railways on the server now this was what i like to call broad gauge or seven blocks wide that's right seven blocks wide on our server now i think it's five if not three at some point now here's a really cool area i did enjoy doing um this little road here with these townhouses based on those that we saw in victoria park on the old server on the old world but then they went under this tunnel here and it was just i don't know i just like this view quite nicely so let's go take a look at a few notable mentions in this world then before moving on to the final phase of this version So notable mention number one, the Amityville Horror House. Um, I liked this. This was quite cool. I liked the use of trees and stuff around it. All of these are like, not even custom trees. They're just normal trees that have just had their leaves changed dramatically. Um, the, the house was quite nice. Really nicely done for this style. Uh, quartz pillars make a great shingling effect on there. Still works to this day, really. Um, lovely stuff. I can't remember who built this. I say at the front, actually. I think it was Jax. Uh, I don't know. A guy called Gunner. Okay, interesting stuff. Don't know what happened to him. Right, well, let's move on to the next notable mention. So some of you might be familiar with a building in London called Harrods. Uh, it's a big old department store. This was um, This was my rendition of it. Now, I started this, I remember, in the summer holidays of that year of uni, and I never finished it. This was it. I just left it at this corner. I really enjoyed building this, as this was my first proper, like, let's take a real-life inspiration and really try and get those details in. Um, and you can see the scale of it now is very similar to what I build these days. So there is no way that I'm not going to carry on building this. You'll see this in, in Whiteburg City one day soon. Uh, Goblin, that's a, that's a note to you to help me on that one, please. And, yeah, finally, there's these townhouses over here I wanted to show you. Um, we're going to go look. Oh, God. Let's not look at those. Right, let's go look at these skyscrapers. Right, so before we leave this version, I wanted to show you Newburgh as a whole. Now, this is the skyscraper district. We're just down from the main city centre there. Yeah, Definitely dated styles, definitely dated designs, but this was built by a duo who came on the server 
around about this time um, and they just went wild with it every day there'll be more and more of these popping up you can just see as far as the eye can see all of these strange styled skyscrapers which at the time looked really good oh yeah we brought that over from the old world is that Kerala still on there again yes it is <laughs> um, yeah, so interesting use of every bit of detail you can get into a build. Um, it was just the design choice at the time. Everything had to be fully fleshed out. I'm happy we've moved on from this, but at the time, it was great. Now, another note of building is this one here. Uh, this was one that I did, and... And I thought it was quite nice. Um, another sort of n not even neoclassical, perhaps neoclassical uh, building. It was called the Hinton Admiral, uh, built by Team Ah oh, Team WBC. Hey, that's a name I haven't seen in a long time. Um, built in 1903. Yeah, just an apartment block with a big old flag on the front. Right, there's a few things I want to show you in the final version of this world. So let's jump on over to phase 4.2. Version 4.2 ended in December 2015. Now, this saw the largest expansion of the city to date, and Whiteburg City had an identity now. It was going to be a mix between American and British. So, a few notable mentions on this map before we jump into game. Bank Street Station up here, a beautiful station that could have been something better, was going to have a strange track coming down this way, and another one leading up here to some docks. Loads of houses planned through there, and more train tracks leading off here with an entire small suburb over here to the right hand side now this one ended as i said in around about december 2015 and it was followed by an interlude period a place known as livington we'll get to that in a bit but let's jump on into this world let me show you the final few little bits of it These statues were everywhere for a while. I can't remember if I designed them or not. I don't know who designed them. Um, speed's still a thing on here, and I'm I'm not sure that's a design choice that was necessary. Anyway, let's go see a few notable mentions here. I have feelings that this was going to be some sort of American football stadium. Uh, interesting use of the Whiteberg flag there in the centre. Very small pitch um, and very big goals made out of gold uh, no this isn't what i want to show you so if we come over here you can see the square got changed around the statue of nelson ended up at the top there with interesting design choice and some townhouses now this is when i'm starting to build a bit more georgian and getting that mindset going that i like this style of architecture it took me a while to um actually develop what i wanted to do and you see behind me this was the sort of last phase of this world and this was around about december 2015 now the reason i have this saved and nothing else afterwards is because we kind of stopped playing this world for a bit and then before i start up a new world in january i think january maybe February 2016 which we'll get on to next which is which is version 5 we had something called limo in between which was a recreation of the town of Limington as best as we possibly could yeah it's kind of where Wolhampton came from I might show you it in a minute um but this world was a save that we had because someone came on and started griefing um you can see these nice big holes here this was the spawn so they spawned in and blew them blew their way out I love people when they do that. But on the on the top here, we have the main mod team doing their speeches. I flipped the town hall around to before it used to face that way. Um, I have we were doing like a massive clearance out to try and sort of replan the place, but we kind of just went nah. Let's move on to another town again. There's one more thing I want to show you apart from the Santa set up there, which I was really proud of, is a station all the way down this end. So this is down the far end of the town, and you can see these skyscrapers are still around, the um, heavily detailed ones with lots of glowstone. The one thing that I took away from this world quite happily was this place here, Bank Street Station, a creation of my own, uh, not based on anything in the real world, trying to use ideas of shape and style for what you want to do with a train station. Now, I think the canopy is a bit low, and also these tracks are very close together and very close to the uh, supports. It's not very realistic, I know, but it was fun to do. Now, the idea here was this was going to go off up that way towards some docks, um, and this was then going off to somewhere else, and I built an interesting bridge here, uh, which then became heavily used in the next version as well, because I can barely ever redo designs because I like to copy myself over and over again. Um, but this place was cool. I think the whole interior was not done. <laughs> that was done on, on the next version, but you can come up here and you could see the trains coming in and out and oh my god these are some steam trains that have just been dumped here yeah and then this was going to curve off down that embankment around that corner and, and off that way along the coast uh you know it's it's cool revisiting a lot of this because i remember the thoughts the planning process the ideas i had at the time and and how they are all encompassing 
but then they are suddenly gone, taken from you. So as I said, the next notable mention is the town of Limo, our Limington project. So I'm going to quickly show you that before we move on to version 5. While not a proper version of Whiteberg City, this world gave way to many changes to come. This was my first ever well-painted proper world with actual real-life designs on it. So I took a Google Earth image, laid it over the top of World Painter and drew over it to create this, my version of Limington. Now, obviously, if anyone watches the channel, they'll know what Wolhampton is. They know that I'm trying to do the same thing. So let's jump on in and see what this place looked like in-game, this interlude phase. So this is meant to have been a one-to-one -one copy of Limington that we were kind of trying to build and put our own aspects into it. Lots of custom trees, lots of all sorts going on. Now, it didn't go all the way, but it did go quite far. Um, this building here actually is just a made-up one uh, based on, can you guess? Yeah, the Singer building that uh, I copied from Wok all of those years ago. I just love that design. Um, this is the Limington branch of the White Coat Industries opened in 1875. Now, I think if we go upstairs in this lift, interiors are becoming more and more a thing and better, better done. If we go up to this floor here, yep, yeah, this is the meeting room, and I love this room. And it's like a little sort of lookout through here, so you can look down the road there. Anyway, I am just reminiscing about things I suddenly remember. I wanted to show you a few buildings down the high street. So if we come on down the high street, some of you will recognise this church here. Yes, this is the one I did use again in Wolhampton. Um, and it's very squished here. I didn't realise how small it was. Um, this church I will be rebuilding again in Wolhampton later next year at some point. So get ready to see that. This is Weatherspoons. Uh, what does that say, Mr White? Yeah, I was going to build spoons there, but that never appeared. Uh, uh, this is the walk through into the graveyard and the car park and stuff at the back. The graveyard was very well kitted out. Now here's an interesting scene. This is this is me being buried apparently. So here lies me. Uh, that's yeah my birthday apparently. Uh, friend game at YouTube. But rest in peace. We mean peace. Okay. Oh yeah, pieces. Oh god. Uh, and then there I am down in here. And there's there's a book about me. What does it say in here? Chapter one at the end. Wow. How nice, uh, there's all of me. But then there's me over here, and I'm giving myself a speech. Very, very strange. I'm going to take one of my bones. Um, and then we have, yeah, a few more graves. There's, there's Simon and, and Lewis from the Oscast again. Um, and this is Granny Bacon, I think. Yeah, Granny Bacon. Lovely. But I loved this graveyard, and I tried to emulate it again for the next version of Wolhampton. But this scene here was incredibly likely. I mean, to the part from that's just 50 times too tall. What's that? Phyllis Finn? Now, if you want a full in-depth uh, like showcase of this place, I did a video on Sassy Treacle with a friend of mine many years back now. Uh, you can watch it, but be warned, there is some swearing in it. Uh, anyway, so this is the main sort of centre of it, um, and it was just really nice. I really enjoyed building this, and this was that sort of stopgap between building... A completely fantastical made up city and trying to rebuild something that's in real life. Um, so let's have a look down this street here. You can see nobody built a diagonal. <laughs> Everyone's built uh, the cars. Are, it's, yeah, planning was definitely a, an issue here, but things were working out. Uh, this was one of those houses, I think, copied across into Wolhampton uh, when that started up, but the church worked. It all kind of worked. Um, I did enjoy doing this, uh, there's the rest of the park out that way, and a few other things, and that was kind of it. Like, it fizzled out when we went and started the new version of Whiteberg. So, let's go take a look at version 5, Mindtopia. It is now January or February 2016, and we have started version 5.1 of Whiteberg City. Now, this is the proper one. This was going to be absolutely massive, and it was all planned out, painted with well painter, sorted and detailed down to the ninth degree. There was train stations. We got a large one up here, floating round down to here to another large train station. Huge river through here. Lots of nice roads and roundabouts. This was going to be the king, but unfortunately, things happened that uh, didn't allow me to carry on with this world very much. So after this, we had to obviously carry on moving along. But still, guys, let's jump on in. I want to show you 5.1 Mindtopia Whiteberg City. It was a shame we ended this one because this had a lot of promise. Now, the reason I ended it is I ran out of money. I was at uni. Um, it was coming to the end of my second year and... 
I didn't have the time or the money to carry on paying for the server. So, and, and the channel wasn't doing anything. It wasn't like it is today. So it's such a shame and I miss these guys so much. We had a good thing going, guys. It's nice that a few of you have returned and it's, uh, to me, I love the idea that I'm still carrying this gauntlet after so long. Anyway, it's not time to get emotional yet. We've got things to look at. So welcome to the centre of Lindenville, also known as the London part of Whiteburg City. So as I mentioned in the previous version, we split them up into two. What the hell is that? We split them up into two. That side over there is the New York side. And this side over here is the London based side. As you can see, planning is up in the air. Been waiting all day to say that. Um, and this is our version of, well, Trafalgar Square with then a big old roundabout in the center. I mentioned before that this statue keeps making appearances in this world, every day when I came back on to play, someone had done something different to it. So if you check out that playlist I put down below, there's a video that I do a showcase of this, the only video. There's a pig's head on it with blood pouring out and all sorts. It's, um yeah, quite graphic. And I just turned up one day and it was there. So what does this actually say? It says, built in 1873, Mr. White leading an army into battle created by... Ah, these are the two guys that did all of those skyscrapers in version 4. Um, I think I've contacted a few of them since. Anyway, this place was promising. It had lots going on about it, townhouses, and then this. This building here you would have seen recently in my Whiteburg City update video. This is that building, the old war office that I've currently made a brand new one of, but I plonked this one down next to it. And this was one of those buildings that I just loved building and it was very much using all of my skills at the time. I think as you can see over the last several versions, things have definitely changed from what they were in those original cities copying things to now using real life inspiration and actually being able to build with it. So we're gonna probably pop up there in a bit, but down here first, I want to take you down this little alleyway. So we've got this railway line coming through here, and we've got this small little alleyway that opens up through here into a market square. So here are some townhouses, some Georgian townhouses, lots of advertising there. And obviously this hotel keeps popping up everywhere. It really wasn't very good. I don't know why I kept copying it into all the worlds. And um, behind me here, but behind me here are some Georgian townhouses. The sort of ones that we kind of build now. You can see again where my uh, building styles and and uh, designs are coming from. So you've got one wide doors, but then you have two wide windows. But you know, these are getting more and more proportionally correct. And you can see that we are mixing and matching scales a bit. So, and, and also still using you know, strange wall details to sort of uh, try and make blank walls look more impressive. Obviously this looked better in the other texture pack, but texturing really became a thing during this period of time. So 2016 is when all of this was built and it really was becoming a bit more fashionable to texture things. I really liked this view of the, of the city. Uh, we had an embassy here built for the Canadians because we had a few Canadians on there. We got some electric parking spots. Oh yeah, I forgot. This was kind of the time when electric cars were really coming out, like Tesla just released theirs and all sorts. Um, so like I said, this is the old town hall of Whiteburg City. I think I built this. I definitely remember doing this. Uh, yeah, built by me, yeah. Uh, the Lord Mayor's house, the old city hall. So the new city hall was there. It's just got turned around and built next to it. So before we get too nostalgic, there's a few things I wish to show you um, over there at the train station. So let's go have a look. So this time planning was definitely better. Uh, you can see we had loads planned out around here, but also the railway lines made a bit more sense. There is a few broken bits where World Edit went a little bit wrong, but we had an entire planning session on how to do a metro for this place. Welcome to WBC. You can see where the name really starts to come from now. This is when we abbreviated it down to WBC a lot more. I obviously took that name later on and used it for this new channel. So I wanted to show you, we'll go inside in a second. I wanted to show you this. So before we finished, this was kind of the thing we were doing we were planning out an entire metro system to sit underneath the city and these were the tube trains we were going to be using in the correct colors in the whiteberg colors and at a scale that isn't too dissimilar to what we do now so you can see several different layers of like train tracks and train stations and like lines so this came out of my head and i kind of then designed like how metro stations would be how underground stations would be these are all named um James Street was over there. You may be wondering, did you build any of this? And the answer is yes, we built quite a bit of it. Well, I know I did at least. That was going to be a huge park in there. Um, never really got around to it. Here's the station again. Didn't get a facelift this time. No, what happened is more cakes got dumped out the front of it. Excellent. No, what happened here is the inside got a bit of a facelift. And I definitely need a facelift. Oh, God. Why? Oh. <laughs> 
Why do I look so ill? Yeah, that's a strange one indeed. No, um, it's over here. So these, this is a, yeah, I liked this station. It was nice. Uh, down here was the entire metro station for Whiteburg City. So we had all the different lines, City Loop, Exeter Street, Westminster Loop, and also the City Link. Um, this is the Victoria Station section of it. Now, I think over here we had Map Art. Yeah, it's, it's dead and gone, but it was actually the logo, the uh, Metro logo, that one there. Really loved it, really, really went along with this. So down here we had, there it is again, uh, we had the entire complex. So a few tunnels weren't built, but most of these were. So you could come on down here, go through to the extra line. I'm going to show you all because this is my favourite part of this. I got really into designing. So let me show you down here quickly. I might need to take some light with me. So we had the entirety of train stations built. Yeah, look, it is very dark down here, but this was gonna be a whole complex of tunnels and platforms and trains and everything. We had different designs for each line. I'll go over to the other side and show you the next line as well. So down this way was Westminster line and also the St. James station line. So we're gonna go on down and see these little posters on the side here, Whiteburg City Tube, Derpington Industries. Yeah, lots of stuff, this was cool. So went down this way here and this went straight through onto a line. So you can see everything's at a different level and that's kind of what I wanted to capture because when you are in like London Underground, everything is, you kind of go through one station to go everywhere. Um, these were all like little signs. You come back through this way and then you can circle back on yourself. This isn't all meant to be diorite. There was no diorite at that time. Oh, actually there was a uh, seat loop line so this is down even further underground and this allows you to carry on um in different directions again we got a platform that way i wonder what this one was so this was all decked out this is victoria station for the exeter line i think no the city link line the westminster line westminster line um yeah little lights going on i oh, just this is one of those projects that if i hadn't run out of time and money we would probably still be burning on here today which is the sad truth but yeah right so let's surface again i've got a few more things to show you so you know how i mentioned about that bank street station from the previous version well here it is extended placed in the actual financial district of Whiteburg with some beautiful roads around it, lots of random lanes, but also we got some trains in here now this time. So this is the version I remember actually being fully decked out inside. This is really nice. Uh, I think there's some more up here actually, but you can see I've kept the arch with where the bridge used to go over. Um, there's no road here anymore because I put a road down that end instead. Um, so it's a bit different, but this is still the same copy and paste job from before. I think I might have raised it a little bit up, but yeah, we went through all like actually putting in signs and doing all of this. So these big old broad gauge uh, tracks are interesting still. Now I spent a lot of my time on this version building infrastructure. This here, is one of those views that I just adored. And this is during the time when shaders became a thing. So every screenshot you would take would have a lovely shader look to it. But this was nice. You had two bridges and a river and it was just infrastructure at its best. Like, look at this. Oh, I loved it. These were built, I think, by uh, Tima, who obviously is still building with us now. It was meant to be our version of uh, One Canary Wharf uh, and a couple more buildings from around there. And then this river carries on down here into big old storm drain pipes, which lead it out into the main river. Now, I did loads of detailing here, but we can't see that anymore. Oh, was there anything else under here? No, um, uh, let's get back to the top. So we come on to a section of road that I then spent majority of my time building towards the end, uh, and also another train station. So that's a tunnel that goes, un that goes under that river with those pipes in which are just there crazy um this was an interesting station so this is based on holborn viaduct in london i extended it and actually made it into a train station but these buildings are from real life uh, they had no windows in them for some reason i kind of liked that when i built them a big old open station so we went for the ticket barriers and you came out onto here you had two tracks going through and some whiteberg flags on here now the reason i brought you over here is because this extends across that way towards something I was working on only up until last year. Um, let's have a look at it. But before we do that, I want to show you this. This was gonna be the River Berg, the massive river that ran through the center of Whiteburg. Big old embankment down there, beautiful bridge over there, just roads going under it. It was just gonna be so nice. Looking at this does give me the feels, like I had so much planned for this world, but alas, it never happened. Anyway, so when I had to take a bit of time off work back in 2018, I found myself coming back to playing in this world again. So I started off building a few little roads, trying to get some ideas in there. Yeah, it was okay. But then I was actually going through the phases of, you know, discovering old architectural pictures and buildings from a bygone era. 
And what I ended up doing was building a rendition of the original Southampton Central Station here, this Neo Tudor building. Now, it's not my best, the scale's a bit off, but this, this building here and, and this building here are what got me back in to playing Minecraft and are what got me back in to building. This whole area is actually the reason I then started back up with Minecraft and with Whiteburg City. There's a few townhouses around here. So it was from these days on to the next. So it's time to leave this version of Whiteburg behind. Minetopia was fun, it was going to be good, but it did pave the way for what we have now. Come with me to version 6. It wasn't really a version, but we need to show you it. Well guys, welcome to version 6 of Whiteburg City. This one never got realised. <laughs> welcome to Hampwickshire, which is the world we played on just before the current one on the main server. And what you're seeing here is a collection of buildings that I wished to uh, use to form Whiteburg City version 6. So we obviously had that one, which came over from version 3. Uh, we had this one, which came from version 4, <laughs> that one from version 4 as well, as with that, and obviously the old war office over there as well. Uh, I think this was from version 4, so yeah, you can kind of get the idea of where things were coming from. This was uh, from the most recent version before this, version 5, that building that I kind of built on the corner and just left. And yeah, this never went anywhere, a shame, apart from the statue got changed to look a bit less gruesome. The issue here was the the world was so corrupted. I mean, it's kind of working now a little bit, but everything was broken on this world and we never got to last on it much longer than five months, probably four months at most. Um, so I want to speak about the Spirixel successor. What on earth is this? Oh, and the Magna Plaster as well. So yeah, I want to speak about the spiritual successor to Whiteburg City and that is Wolhampton. Let's go look at that. So if you've been following my channel for more than a year, you'll know exactly what this Wolhampton was. This was my big project. I loved building it. So it was based mainly on Limington, um, but there was more to it. Buildings from all over the country came and sat here, and this was shaping up to be the next Whiteburg city. Here's that church again from uh, the other version of Limington that I showed you before. Extended slightly. I actually don't think it was. And this one was great. I really enjoyed building it, but again, it wasn't realised correctly. I mean, we were doing it in a world that wasn't designed for it. Uh, this was all a normal generation and things were a bit cramped and do you know what guys this is the f this is the first time I've been back here since I got rid of this world from the server and this was good. I liked this. This was fun but what was interesting was it finally dawned on me that we need a proper world that could really hold cities to their own. We could build on together and as you know at this point the server was growing more and more. We had loads of people on and they're all building their own individual towns and cities and at this point as well a style was decided on, an era was decided on, we had purpose, we had design, we had scale, and those are all the things that really do help build one, a coherent world, and two, allow you to translate real life buildings into Minecraft properly. So you can see behind me actually, were some of the original buildings here in Wolhampton. I started these on the first month or so of building it. They're not great. They're not that level of building, but you have to go through these stages in order to create something much better. These ones here again, very weirdly textured, very strangely done. I think I was still using a texture pack at that point because these don't feel right to me anymore. These ones here as well, these are much better, but they're much later. Uh, these were towards the end of the whole project. Now, what I'm getting at here is you've seen over the last however long this video has been, you've seen my growth from the original survival player up to this level of using real life inspiration to design my own town. Now, we took on the challenge of Whiteburg City again for version seven. We're gonna go there in a moment. Let's just reminisce here in this park for a second. I have a message sort of like to anyone wanting to build something like this in game. You can never expect to start straight away and be the best. I mean, there are people that do and it's amazing. But someone like me, I've had to grow, change, adapt, find exactly what I want to do throughout the entirety of the last 10 years. So at first I just wanted to build things, like it didn't really matter what style or anything like that. Then I wanted to copy things to, you know, show people and go, this is mine. Then I kind of wanted to make my own buildings and didn't really realise how to do them properly. Then I went, hey, that's really fun. I want to try that with real life buildings. And here we are, standing in a park based on one from Bristol. So guys, let's go look at version 7 and see where the conclusion of this story comes. Although it isn't the true conclusion. 
So that brings us on to the present day, 2021 and Whiteberg City as it is now, version 7. Now the theme for this one is grand, amazing, big, mainly built out of Baroque architecture currently, based on London but not going to be entirely recreating London. The planning is going to take ideas from London but a lot will change. As you can see, the entirety of this area will be developed one day into the city of Whiteburg. Whiteburg City 7.0. Well, let's jump in game and let me show you what we've got so far. The year is 2021. 10 years after I started playing this game. 10 years after inventing an idea in my head of what I wanted Whiteburg City to look like. And finally, after a decade, it's come to life. It's starting to be realised. The team and I have been working tirelessly on this project, and you've seen it quite a bit on the channel so far, but you, you haven't seen the full scale of what we've got planned. To me, this is finally the point in my life where I'm like, I actually have followed through with something. It's, it's taken 10 years, a decade, but you've seen the process now. You've seen what's happened over those last 10 years. And it's culminated in this, the idea that Whiteburg City is a collection of buildings, ideas, and realizations of things from the real world, things from the abstract, things from people's mind. Now, I'm ever, ever so grateful that people, you guys, have got on board with this mission for, well, as I started it with Sassy Treacle all of those years back, and now as well with this new version of it. It seems that you also want to come with me on this journey of trying to figure out what Whiteburg City should be. Now, this one I can't promise will be the final one. I can't promise any of that at all. In my head right now, this is the most contempt I have been and happy with a place that I'm very much willing to die on this hill saying, this is the best Whiteburg city. This is the only Whiteburg city. This is it done. But we've got years left on this. This is where Mindtopia should have been. This is where everything kind of was heading. If those last 10 years hadn't happened, if I hadn't have done Whiteburg with Sassy Treacle, Whiteburg with, you know, always having the idea there from the days, the early days of playing survival, then who knows, I wouldn't be here now doing this. For as long as Whiteburg City exists in my mind and in your minds, I'll be here building it, doing whatever I can to try and take the idea of what it should be. No one knows what the idea of Whiteburg City should be. I don't even know. Over the coming months and years, you guys will see this city grow from its humble beginnings, I say humble, from the absolute majesty around us beginnings to a city that will rival those of the best. So will you guys come with me on this journey of discovery, enlightenment, and just sheer time and effort <laughs> and join me for another 10 years, yes, 10 years, while we build Whiteburg City finally, while we seize the moment to capture this. I don't know where this is going. I'm walking to the sunset. Well, anyway, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this look back, this nostalgia trip for myself and possibly even some of you across the last 10 years of Minecraft, across the last 10 years of the concept that is Whiteburg City. And one day we will see a final city that will bear that name. But until that day, guys, remember, get inspired, get building, and I'll see you next time and the time after that and the time after that. And for the next 10 years, yeah, we've, we've done that bit. Anyway, guys, see you next time for another one of these History of Whiteburg City. Is there going to be another one? There may be another one. Until then, goodbye.